What's going on, my creative collective? Welcome to lesson number 17 for A Course in Creativity. Which came first, the chicken or the observation? So this is based on lesson 17, I see no neutral things, uh, which is a fantastic reminder that we really, everything that we think is charged in some way. It's charged by association. So our thoughts typically are charged by their proximity to beliefs, to perception. All of these things are true. So when we break it down, um, we can get into this kind of feedback loop where beliefs are informed by perception, are informed by experience, reinforced thought, which turn, which in turn creates beliefs, which in turn perception, right? So it becomes this feedback loop where we look for these different circular ways of um, reality presenting itself. And that's our experience. That's our life, right? That's how we make a life. A lot of our thoughts precede perception. So before I can really truly know what something is, it comes through a filter, which is usually the ego stories and beliefs that I have built up in me. So this is like all built up in me and it's basically saying that um, I don't actually know what something is for and anytime I try to perceive something, I perceive it through the lens of the ways that it has happened before, perceptions that I have that are shaped by beliefs that I hold. It's quite interesting when, it, when you start to break it down because you begin to see how our beliefs about the world are so largely shaped by us. The things in it can be themselves, yes. But what about when people are really happy and statistically speaking, they shouldn't be? How do we explain that, right? How do we explain that? I don't want to, I want them to be happy. <laughs> but it's like, how do we explain that? Even our senses, even our senses interpret through this perception, this place of perception within us, where we're, we're experiencing things based on what we know them to be from before based on what we know them to be from before. We build up a set of expectations about what the world is supposed to mean and do and be and have and all of these things in it. And then we can we project that outwards. And when that doesn't align, that's sort of, we start to get confronted with these little ego deaths, right? We start to get confronted with this way of seeing things as falling apart. And you know, we, we react in ways that are appropriate to ego deaths. Um, and, and we start to have a little miniature, I guess, an existential crisis of sorts because what we thought meant things actually means nothing and what doesn't mean anything anymore might mean something and all of it starts to fall apart. Um, and, you know, I think about the, there's a quote that I think about with this, there's no neutral thoughts. And the quote is, um, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're probably right. You're probably right. Um, I think about this relative to my own experience. Right? If I thought that I couldn't, if I relied on that because I, I looked into the world and said the world is telling me about myself based on things happening in it, if I believed that, I never would have gotten anywhere above the poverty line. My mother raised my brother and I on $35,000 a year plus a little bit of child support. If I didn't believe that something was bigger or possible, like bigger than that experience, than the, the, the simplicity of that experience, I would never have reached for something more. If I had become identified with that experience and that became part of my ego, it would have been even harder. I think about, you know, in 2007, uh, I was nearly murdered and I had to leave school. I had to leave. I was in the midst of doing a BA and I left because I there was no way I could go back at that point. I'm fine now. Um, but I, I there was no way for me to go back. So I just abandoned ideas of going back to school. I just left it, right? And, you know, the thing is here, this isn't to say that my experience is one that should be upheld as the monolith of, of everyone who's had these experiences. No, this is to say that if I associated with the charged thoughts that I had about those times, I never would have reached for something more. Never, never. Right after that experience in 2007, I thought, well, I'll never end up really going back to school. I'll just set it to the side. Maybe one day, maybe one day. Well, one day came and I had the chance to apply to a master's program. There was a non-standard applicant rationale and I sat on it for two weeks. I wasn't too sure whether I was going to or not. And um, someone had told me that, uh, who ended up being my supervisor in the program, um, told me, you know, you should apply. They, they do take applications after the date that it closes. I looked at the date that the program closed, February. Okay, so this is July. I was like, well, this is really late. I don't know. I waited for two more weeks because I wasn't sure. And then I applied and I got in in July when the program closed in February um, so I have a master's degree that was funded by a university because I, I you know and again I think to myself if I had closed myself off because I had said well you know the, the 
beliefs would tell me and convince me that there's no reason to hope for something more. So I just don't. Then you you close yourself off. Now, how does this relate to there are no, I see no neutral things? Well, it's understanding that there's a charge to most things that we think. Most things that we think have a charge to them. Um, they have and charge just meaning an energy that's activated, a heightened energy to them. We have an association that we lend to them from the past. There's, you know, when, even again, when we go back to perception, even the things that we perceive are even filtered through that process. So what we assume are thoughts that are occurring because of things that we're seeing out in the world, they're also occurring because we've trained ourselves through ego stories, what to expect, what to expect. So when it comes down to it, what do we want? What do we want for ourselves? And this is where it gives us that pause to come back to the present moment, to come back to ourselves, to center in the heart space, to look out into the world and to say, what is actually happening here? And am I going to let this be the thing that defines my whole experience? Am I going to let this thing define my whole experience? And, and even, even with transness, I look into the world at headlines um, that are not necessarily great. That can limit me. That can tell me that I should play small, that it's not safe, and that I need to be curling up somewhere safe because it's really scary out there. It, it kind of is some days. But it's also just that we get to choose. We get to choose, but we, we have to choose and understand that that choosing takes place in a present moment awareness, in our awareness of the present moment. That's where we get to choose. That's where our power is. I've said it in other videos, but this is really it for me, right? I have, I, I see no neutral things. I see no neutral things. Everything has some kind of association to it. So which are we going to listen to more, right? It goes back to the feedback loop, beliefs, filter down through and inform perceptions which then shape experiences that reinforce thoughts that become beliefs and then it goes into that feedback loop right so we have to really take a step back and ask ourselves how much of what we experience in a day is because of our thinking about it and our thoughts about what's going on and the beliefs that we hold about it and how much how much is about what we're actually thinking and who we actually are Art is a fantastic way to transcribe reality, to see this, you know, to see this on a canvas, to see this up close and personal because we see artists kind of disappear <laughs> into their process when they make things and create things and in their translation of reality. It gets to be phenomenal to watch and even to experience. As a writer, I, I experience this a lot. Um, and, you know, as a poet, a photo poet too, this is just, it's so good to me. It's so healing to me. Um, because we begin to see that the present moment is not uh, a vessel. The present moment is symptomatic of being there. The present moment is not the thing that we need to go. And, and that's not how we get to where we need to go all the time. That's symptomatic of being there, right? When we come back to this present moment awareness, we realize that the present moment, we can sometimes place it in a position of being a thing outside of us that we're reaching for, that we're grasping at, right? And when it comes down to it, it's just symptomatic of being there. So your creative spark for today is to just doodle for about 15, 20 minutes. Just doodle a little bit. You don't have to make it the best, best painting or sketch you've ever made. Just doodle, just, you know, scribble on a page, write something, you know, stream of consciousness. If you're familiar with Julia Cameron, it's like the artist's ways morning pages, right? So doing that, just scribbling things out a little bit. Um, it gets to be such a cathartic experience. So once you finish scribbling it and doing your little doodles, pull back and look at the neutrality. How can you, can you see what it is that you drew without associating something with it? Can we do this? The point here isn't to create from neutrality. The point here is to see that so seldom do we think anything that's neutral and we just put into and on the page in a doodle or a sketch proof that that's the case. We don't create from neutral places. So I'm going out of focus here. Um, we don't create from neutral places, right? It's, it's really difficult for us to, um, it's very difficult for us to. So, and, and usually it's in service to the ego, to reinforcing stories about us that are not our, our true selves, that are not in concert, in concert with our higher selves. They're usually in conversation with experiences and limiting beliefs that we've had that we do battle with every day. And we do battle with it in, in subtle ways too, be it through judging other people, uh, be it through, you know, guilt, 
uh, through being on like doom scrolling, <laughs> right? Because that's that really doom scrolling to me is really an intense form of self harm, and we can. It's almost like we we have this guilt within us that we carry or something along those lines, be it guilt, shame, judgment, then instead of directing outwards, we direct it ourselves. And so if you do that, I recommend trying to pull out of it um, or at least seeing what we get from it, seeing what you, what, what, how you benefit from it. Um, but uh, because it can contribute to this uh, inability to think neutrally, right? And we're not aiming, we're not trying to start out uh, from a neutral place completely because the ego is going to be with us for the rest of our lives. The ego doesn't really go away. Um, and what a beautiful, to me, this is such a beautiful mechanism to help us, to remind us of our humanity, to help remind us of the challenges that other people face. Because as you'll see in the coming lessons, we're not in this alone. Everyone else around us is experiencing this too. So it's a call to come back to the center of that, to come back to the awareness of that and to understand that there's as much as we're going through this individually, we have no neutral thoughts. So too, no one else does either. No one else has neutral thoughts either, which makes it doubly and triply complicated uh, because how do we sift through it all? It's all generally speaking in service to the ego's positionality, which is in its, in its inner workings, what it wants to do is to pull us away from these neutral places because it pulls us away from being connected to one another. It pulls us away from connection and into disconnection because we then believe that we are separate from one another. We believe that we're not all connected. We believe that that's the case, right? Um, so, and, and this also reminds us that it's all made up. Everything that we see in the world is made up. We make it up every day that we wake up every night before we go to sleep we make up everything in between all of it every single second the good news is that we don't have to know what thoughts are for today that's not the point of this this particular creative spark and part of course of creativity built on a course of miracles this isn't the point um, the point is just to sit back and to observe ourselves but to try and observe ourselves from a place of seeing the charge that we place on thoughts by virtue of the things that we've thought before, um, all of that. So it really does come down to um, understanding that we don't have to we don't have to play the game the same anymore. We really don't. I see no neutral things. And which came first, the chicken or the observation? Um, I'm willing to bet maybe the chicken. <laughs> maybe the chicken. I don't know. But it's up to you. <laughs> it's up to you. So. Thank you so much for joining me here today, my friends. I really appreciate your time. If this resonated or you liked it, please like and subscribe. It helps me to grow the channel and I am very appreciative for that. Uh, so wherever this finds you on the time space continuum, morning, afternoon, or night, I hope it finds you very well, my friends. Take care.